Hi, I am Dr. Vidhuvarsha. Here we will cover pediatric postgraduate questions for university exam. Today we will talk about sublingual medications in children. This content I have, uh, I have taken from IJPP article. which is a uh, recent from July to September 2022. Here in children with cerebral palsy, neuromuscular disorders, airway malformations craniofacial malformations fifth the children with GA diseases uh, such as corrosive injuries these children have dysphagia as common so since these children have dysphagia in common they can't swallow the drugs that is oral drugs they cannot swallow so for this we mainly use sublingual drugs okay for this sublingual drugs to act how this sublingual drugs act that is the mechanism of action drugs that are kept in the sublingual region mechanism of action sublingual region are observed through sublingual varices from sublingual varices they go to the facial vein from facial vein they are passed on to ijv from ijv they go to brachiocephalic vein this is one route of uh, drug absorption the second method is by a passive diffusion that is passive diff how does passive diffusion occurs it is passive diffusion via lipoidal membrane so this is a mechanism of action this is the second point to for you to write in the examination the third point is what are the drugs that can be absorbed easily in sublingual region the drugs that have ph that is equal to 6 that is a ph that is nearly equal to saliva favors a better absorption it favors better absorption next what are the advantages and disadvantages of sublingual administration of drugs your first advantage is it has a rapid onset of action second liver is bypassed since liver is bypassed since this liver is bypassed it has a uh, higher efficacy with low dosage and low toxicity third these drugs are protected from the degradation due to gastric ph and digestive enzymes so these are protected from degradation by gastric ph and digestive enzymes so these three are the main advantages of uh, uh, sublingual administration of drugs what are the disadvantages so disadvantages are this cannot be used uh, for a prolonged usage that is uh, it can uh, uh, interfere with the drinking eating and talking so it is unsuitable for the prolonged use next it cannot be taken in patients with oral ulcers it cannot be used in patients with oral ulcers in this there is no sustained delivery of drugs
so these are the third point you have to write in a question that are they have asked like sublingual medications what are the advantages disadvantages or sublingual medications that are used in children so this is the third point you have to write next what are the drugs that are being used first is sublingual buprenorphine for what this drug is used it is mainly used for the relief of moderate to severe pain in children so which age group they can be used these are licensed for use in children more than 6 years of age so use is for more than 6 years of age i'm not going to tell in detail about the dosages in which they are been used next is sublingual desmopressin sublingual desmopressin is mainly used for primary nocturnal enuresis next is for diabetes insipidus so uh, this has been a better option for uh, in children with the central diabetes insipidus uh, since uh, the nasal absorption uh, that is intranasal formulation uh, it is better than intranasal inter intranasal formulations that has been considered here uh, for using this desmopressin drug next next is sublingual atropine so sorry one second so this is better than that is better absorption than intranasal formulation next is sublingual atropin sublingual atropin is effective in the short term treatment for sialuria fourth drug fourth drug is sublingual nifedipine but what are the disadvantages in using a sublingual nifedipine is they can cause profound hypotension that is disadvantage so they can cause profound hypotension oxygen desaturation so they are these are used only in a hypertensive emergencies in children that is to with caution next is sublingual immunotherapy so this induces a allergen specific immune tolerance by sublingual administration of a gradually increasing dose of an allergen so they are administering an allergen in a gradual dose so allergen is introduced in a gradual dosage so in a, this this is called slit uh, the allergen is given as drops under the trunk trunk drops so this been mainly used for mite allergies egg allergies peanut allergies so these are the points you are supposed to write if they ask a question like sublingual medications in children so just a recap of this so sublingual medications in children so these are being mainly 
used in children with cerebral palsy neuromuscular disorders airway malformation craniofacial malformation and gi disease with the corrosive injuries since these child children have dysphagia as common mechanism of action the drug is getting absorbed by sublingual varices through facial vein then through ijv then through brachiocephalic liquid this is one method of absorption second is through passive diffusion via lipoidal membrane so the drug can be absorbed very easily if its ph is equal to 6 that is matching the saliva's ph So advantages: rapid onset of action, liver has been bypassed. It is protected from degradation by gastric pH and digestive enzymes. Disadvantages are: it is unsuitable for prolonged usage since it can now uh, dis interfere with eating, drinking, and talking. In patients with oral ulcers, it cannot be used. It doesn't have a sustained delivery of drugs. So the drugs: what are the drugs? Sublingual. These are sublingual buprenorphine, sublingual desmopressin, sublingual atropine. sublingual nifedipine and it is sublingual immunotherapy thank you have a nice day